Hey fellow viewers, welcome back to another video. I am back outside with Nezuko the 8th gen and Scarlet the 9th gen. Um, sorry if you could hear my neighbors in the background putting around on their four wheelers. Um, not my thing. <laughs> but uh, here we are. Um, and I just wanted to make this video to compare the 9th and the 8th gens. Um, because both of these cars do it very well on the channel. And it looks like I'm hitting this really good niche with the 8th and the 9th gen SIs. So I just want to talk about them um talk about which one's better hello buddy welcome welcome to the video here uh, i just want to talk about which one's better uh which one suits your needs more um which one are you more into and which one should you buy so we're going to go into the it, the exterior the designs the weight handling engine interior aftermarket uh we'll take them on a drive and then we'll also uh, have maybe a little race if I can at the end to compare a stock versus stock SI basically so Let's get right into this We have our little cat companion here to help us out Okay guys, so coming in in the first section we have here We're gonna go we're gonna talk about the exterior of these two cars and first of all Let me introduce you to what these guys are uh, we have a uh, Nezuko here, which is my FA5, which is a 2009 Honda Civic SI, uh, it's a sedan, which is the FA5, of course. And then we have our Scarlet, our 2013 Honda Civic SI sedan as well. And the 13, obviously, was the first year of the facelift, lifted version, and I'll get into that a little bit later. So, looks, and he is here to stay. He's just kind of like my little buddy now. He's in the recording. Uh, let's go into looks a little bit, and this is really suggestive and really what you like more. Um, yeah, let's just get straight into that. Um, kinda, just more or less. The 8th gen is just more rounded. Um, with the 9th gen generation, they really decided to, to angle it up a little bit. It's still round and it's still pretty smooth with its lines, but it definitely hit a more angular approach, a more new school, fast boy racer look. Uh, taillights are a lot more angled. This is just curved. The whole thing is just more curved. Even the the gas cap here is circular. So the whole thing is a little bit more rounded. And getting into the design of the cars, um, the 8th gen started in 2006 and went all the way to 2011. So it had a good run. It had a good five-year run. Um, but from 06 to 2008 was the preface the lifted version, which is not this one. Uh, the rear stayed pretty close to the same on both the coupe and the sedan. It was more or less the front end that got changed more or less a lot. Um, the 06 through 08, I'm not a big fan of for those three years. They look a little too too rounded and too not aggressive. Um, but from 2009 to 11 they facelift give it a facelift in a better transmission with better synchros um so that's something to look out for here and then this one goes even further um 2012 came and it looked disgusting um if you ask me it looked like a base civic um which let alone isn't bad but you know you're getting the si for a sports trim you want it to be more sporty so in 2013 they gave it a whole refresh and i mean a whole refresh this was a facelift this was a refresh the whole thing changed including the rear, I put some pictures up, the front, the side, everything changed, the interior, not very much, but then the 2014 to 15, because this was, uh, these are from 2012 to 2015, I apologize, that's the ninth gen, um, from 14 to 15, they didn't change the outside much except different wheels, that looked better for sure, I like the wheels better on these than this one, until they went to 14 to 15, these look better. Um, but the inside changed a lot. There was a lot more commodities on the inside, like a double DIN touch screen, Apple CarPlay, uh, backup camera, stuff like that. And I'll get into that a little later. So if you're looking for that stuff, you want the 14 and 15. The 13 is the inside is just like the pre the pre modeled one. Um, this is just the outside change, which is a big help. And let's talk about paint. Um, the eighth gen paint sucks. Um, for sure. Um, the 8th gen paint, Honda in general just as a whole had paint issues and there was a recall. Um, their clear would fade really bad. If you look on the other side, you could see that it's fading pretty bad and it's starting to in the rear, sadly, and the hood. So it's just a problem with these. The left side looks great so far, but 
it won't for very long. I plan on getting a resprayed. Um, that is a thing. Honda, um, Honda had a recall, um, but if you didn't get it within the seven years, you can't do it anymore. They won't let you, which is which kind of sucks. So sorry, you can't go to Honda and go get it recalled. I know it stinks. Um, here though, they really learned a lesson and the paint's really nice. It's really thick. It stays on, the clear stays, it's really nice. There's still a lot of orange peel, of course. It's not a luxury car, but I mean, the paint's there. It's not going anywhere and it feels really good. You know how like, you just feel better quality and that's what this feels like. Um, and just getting into the next thing here, we're just gonna talk about weight. Um, the eighth gen is slightly lighter, about 50 pounds lighter. And that's kind of insane with the, the added stuff. And you know, they kind of just get bigger over the years, which really these are kind of similar sizes. But uh, this, uh, the sedan eighth gen is about 2844, uh, 2844 pounds. So that below that 3000 pound mark, um, below that magic number, which is kind of insane how they actually kept the weight pretty good for growing bigger. It's kind of surprising. And over here we got um, 2,895 pounds, almost 2,900 pounds. Pretty insane. I mean, honestly, 50 pounds heavier than this guy. I mean, it looks a lot more chunky. It's kind of impressive. And just getting into handling, I'll get more into that on the drive, but they for sure have their differences. The suspension are both tighter for the SI, SI suspension, tighter, better for cornering, um, and bigger brakes, of course, on the SI models. They feel very similar. But if you ask me, I don't know what's about it. It might be complementing with the engine that's in the 8th gen, but it just feels like it wants to rotate a lot more. It feels more peppy and it feels like way, it feels lighter, it, which it is. It is 50 pounds lighter, but it's not like you're going to feel 50 pounds that much in a car. You know what I mean? So I don't know. It just feels a little more nimble, but that's not nothing to dog on this. Um, this one just feels like it wants to rotate more because they did put thicker um sway bars in this car but this one just feels like a little more like it wants to go around corners even though this one is more rigid so let's get into the engine now and i'll talk about the engine okay so next category here we're going to talk about the engines which is its main big deal the big difference between it which is funny because it's a small category but it's huge the the bullet points within it are huge and i'll get a little bit more into it a little bit later but let's talk about them so from 2006 to 2011 honda civic si became the k20 z3 which is a obviously a k series it's a two liter it's the k20 in the name and uh the z3 came in the si only um it's a fantastic motor it's a two liter like i just said making 197 horsepower to the crank important to know and about 139 foot-pounds of torque, making, I think, around max torque at like 6,000 RPMs. <laughs> it redlines at 8,000, um, but the fuel cutoff is at 8,200. Um, stuck, if you are tuned, you can go a little higher. You can go up to about 8,600 RPM. Any more, you need a Type S oil pump or you need to just build the head a little bit more. You don't want to rev past that much, but insane rev... Insane revs for a stock car. Um, it's very gutless below the 6,000. It's all up top and it's super fun. Again, two liter with only 139 foot pounds of torque, but I tell you what, it feels less. My EJ Coupe has 131 foot pounds of torque, but it is a lot more torquey because it's lighter. Over here, we have the K24 Z7, which is a very controversial motor, but on paper sounds really, really good. And it is fun. It makes 205 horsepower to the crank and 174 foot-pounds of torque with the refresh. Um, the 2012 one only made, I think, 100 and 201 horsepower and 170 foot-pounds of torque. So they squeezed just a little bit more out of the motor when they did the refresh. So the motor did make a little more power. It's an extremely torquey and fun motor. VTEC, it, the red line, though, it comes at a trade-off for this one. The red line is at 7,000. Um, the fuel cutoff is 7,200 RPM, so it's 1,000 less. And when you tune it, you don't really want to go much higher. I think you can go about 75, but it's nothing to the 8,600 that the K20 has. Of course, it's a K-Series as well. It's a 2.4 liter. And we have the, the whole mountain coming down today. It's a 2.4 liter. 
Um, and one big controversial thing about this motor is, you know, we're getting later in the years now. It's a 2013. Um, the K24Z7 only used one cam for VTEC, unlike the K20Z3 over here, which used both cams for VTEC, for true VTEC. And that's one huge reason this car isn't considered a true SI anymore, because VTEC is a lot less pronounced. You don't get that crazy crossover sound. get that pushy back in your seat it's a lot more smooth and there's a light that comes on when VTEC comes on a lot of people call it a dummy light so there is that um, and the K20 has a normal um, place for a header built into the head itself not the block and the K24 the reason I mentioned that is because the K24 Z7 has a downpipe header which is a very very strange thing causing lots of people to be mad at that head because there's barely any, if any, aftermarket support for the K24Z7 head. So you're kind of getting um, screwed over in the head department on this motor. And I'm not sure if it's, I'm not sure it's as easy as just swapping heads over, but I'm not trying to be biased. Um, I'll get more into that a little later in the aftermarket section, but really base to base, they're both extremely fun. And honestly, this will be faster, I'm guessing. We'll, we'll see in the race later but I'm guessing this car will just be faster. It's just higher power everywhere on paper. 205 against 197, um, 174 foot-pounds of torque versus 139. It's kind, this is kind of at a loss on paper here, but we'll get into more about the engine a little bit later. Let's get into the interior part of this video now. Um, I'm not sure where our little buddy went. He's seeming to be gone. He'll probably be back. So let's get into the interior section. This is where I really think I'm biased towards this car. I try not to be because I like both of them very much. There's not many SIs I don't like, uh, unless we're talking about the seventh gen SI. I don't like that. The B3 is a weird car. Sorry. Um, so I like to not be biased, but of course this one's my personal car, so I'm going to like it more. But um, I really think the ninth gen has the interior side beat on every level over the 8th gen, absolutely. Um, so interior, I'm gonna be showing some B-rolls, of course, but the 8th gen is just very outdated now. Um, of course, it came out in 2006 to 2011, and that's before Honda really decided to up their quality and go out pure, just nice commodities. Um, the most commodities you're gonna have, it's funny, because like to me, it's a lot of commodities. Uh, just coming from old 90s cars, there's cruise control, there's AC, there's power steering, and there is a radio. And you can control the radio via the steering wheel. Um, that's about it. I mean, really, you have nothing else. And there's a sunroof. There is a sunroof, and there's automatic uh, driver's side window. Um, th that's it. Um, and it all looks very old, of course. Uh, has the old Honda CD player in it. Uh, it says premium sound. Uh, nothing premium about it at all. Uh, it's just very outdated. And that's not meaning to say that it's ugly, because um, it's not. I personally think it's aged pretty well or everywhere but the stereo, because the stereo, there he's back. The stereo is very ugly. Um, but everything else around it is aged very well. I've talked about in my first video ever, just because it's very smooth, very angular. So everything flows very well. It is not so jagged. I feel like the more jagged something is, the worse it ages. So the fact that it's all so curvy and the two-tier dash system looks really good, it doesn't look horrible at all. Okay, I'm back, another one. Um, <laughs> it doesn't look bad at all. And in fact, I really like it when you're in the car, especially at night with all the red lights. It's very, it feels like you're in a spaceship almost. <laughs> I very much like it, but everything else on this thing blows it out of the water. So I'm not even saying it's bad. You guys can see it for yourself. The seats feel very good. I personally like the seats better in the 8th gen, actually. So there's a little bit of a, uh, they just feel the, the side cushioning, side bracing is a lot better, if you ask me. And the shifting, the shifter placement is a lot better in the 8th gen. But everything else here over here on the 9th gen is just over here, over here, over here, over here. Sit, hear thee. <laughs> 
<laughs> we got the ninth gen over here. Everything's better. Um, it just looks better. Um, from 20, so this is where we can go into some some year differences, okay? So from 2012 to 13, this year, they stayed the same pretty much. The inside had black seats. The infotainment system was also a CD player, just like there, but it looks much, much better. And it had a, the two tier dash system with a screen on the second tier dash system that you can't see um, unless it's turned on with all your, your service, your power, your gas mileage, and your reverse camera that it has, which is super nice. Um, I don't rely on reverse cameras, but they are nice to have, especially when your back window's fogged up, you know what I mean? Um, but whenever it hit to 2014 and 15, the last two years of the uh, ninth gen, the seats had a like a red black look and they look really good. Like the center of the seats is full red and the side bolster is black and looks really good. So the seats were all done, done up. And the the stereo was replaced with a double din, which is super nice. And it I think it actually has a volume knob, unlike the uh the tensions, I think. Don't quote me on that because I don't own one. Um, but that coupe that we did with Ryan's that review. I think it was a volume knob, but I don't remember. Um, that one also has a screen up top for your service, your power and stuff like that, but your reverse camera, your Apple CarPlay and stuff like that's all on that stereo. And it just looks, it looks a lot cleaner. And also there is a, there is a blind spot detector um, on the 14 and 15 as well in the mirror. So whenever you turn on the right blinker, a camera pops up on your double din, which is super cool. Um, it's kind of gimmicky, but it's super cool. You know, if you don't want the stupid little blind spot lights, or you don't want to look over your shoulder every time, that's really cool to have. So really, and the shifter feels a little more notchy. And this one, I think I was watching a video today saying that this one felt more notchy and I don't agree. There's just not enough weight behind this one. Uh, I got a weighted skunk two shift knob just because it wasn't weighted enough. So this one felt better. Um, and that's about it on the interior. This one kind of just takes the cake, but not meaning this one is bad. In fact, it's really cool and really minimalist, um, all driver focused. And it's just proving what Honda really wanted and wanted to be a driver's car more or less than some fancy gadget. Um, so let's go on to the aftermarket scene now before we go on the drive and the race. So let's get into the last section here before we go on the drives. Um, the drives will be very brief, by the way. Um, it won't be a full video will be an hour long because I like to talk and the race of course but um aftermarket I'm gonna try not to get super off the rails because I can because when I start talking about aftermarket I could do that especially for mine because I have a whole list of what I want to do and it's just it's crazy and it's the daily so I have a problem a fit might be in my future <laughs> the K20 Z3 aftermarket versus the K24 Z7 the Z3 is a lot more capable there's a lot more there. And um, and it's not a, more or less the age, because a lot of people say it's because this one's older. No, it's because this has the Z7. And I know I'm kind of Z7, but it's, it's true. <laughs> so the Z3 has just about anything you could possibly think of. Um, you, you want cams? Sure, you can go um, Drag Cartel, which are huge. You can go Skunk 2, Brian Crower, or Crower. I don't care what you call it. There's many things. There's Supertech valves, um, valve springs. You could do redo your whole head. There's manifolds. There's hybrid racing intake, um, cold air intakes, or short or Skunk 2 makes one as well. There's short ram intakes. There's headers. There's full exhausts. There's pistons. There's sleeves. There's connecting rods, cranks, cams. I already said cams. <laughs> throttle bodies, individual throttle bodies. It, it's just insane. I'm not even going to go more. There's turbo kits, supercharger kits. I just, as I did anyway, um, it goes insane. Uh, <laughs> these things can handle pretty good. Um, I see quite commonly 400 horsepower stock internals reliably push. I've seen them go farther, but you start pushing the reliability envelope quite a lot um, with full bolt on. When I mean full bolt on, I do mean uh, an intake, usually a cold air intake um header and an exhaust so just cold air intake header and exhaust um i see around from 205 to 225 horsepower to the wheels 
which is really important. So you're really going from 180, 185 to the wheels to 220 about there. It's normal I'm seeing, 115 to 120. Um, depending on where you are in your elevation is huge. And that's just bolt time. You can go E85 as well if you're lucky and have it around here. And you can push 230 above. If you build your head so you can rev higher to like nine, you're looking even better. And turbo kits just make this thing going crazy. Superchargers that responds well to as well. You can go to the moon with this engine and there's a ton of stuff you could do with it. The Z7, <clears throat> and also you can go to extreme measures. Like you want 2000 horsepower? Sure. It's gonna be a different motor at the end of the day because you're gonna need everything new, but sure you could do it. <laughs> the Z7, this poor bastard, See, if you want a daily, and I said this in my, my review for this car, if you want a daily with full bolt-on, you almost can't get better than this with its modern commodities and its nice sound system and it just its nice looks, honestly, and it's usually their lower mileage because uh, they're newer. This is perfect. If you just want to do a few mods and you're done, you want wheels, suspension, brakes and then you want full bolt on you're great if you want past that you're kind of going to be like struggling a little bit so the z7 full bolt on again with a uh, intake um header and exhaust you're going to be looking at 210 to 225 um you i'm not seeing as many good results of high power with these as this one full bolt on this one just responds extremely well um but the torque is just insane uh, with this one. It goes up to like 180 something. Maybe I've seen 190 before, but that's not that common. And this one goes up to like 150. I've seen low 160s. So it's like, you know what I mean? Um, and you can throw a turbo on this one and make insane power. That's easy. You know, the turbo is a cheat code, but um, and the intake manifold is huge. You could uh, swap the intake manifold with the RBC, which is in the K20 and you're going to be sacrificing some torque for some high end and i don't think it's worth it that's a hot take because everyone loves to do it in these i don't think it's worth it just because you're getting rid of some of that torque and that's what's special about this is the 174 foot pounds of torque so i don't know if it's worth it but a lot of people swear by it and ryan's ryan's was an rbc intake um manifold so if you want to see that go watch that and go watch this review for the stock version it's insane how different they are for sure um but that's about it again like i said i don't think anyone makes cams for these heads and um i don't think you could just head swap i think if you head swap with uh with a normal k24 head i think the pistons hit or something like that i could be very wrong but i honestly see majority of the time if someone wants to make good power with a ninth gen past full bolt on of the Z7 or just turboing it, waiting for it to blow, they just put a K24A2 or JDM K24A in it, and then they call it a day because that one's a true VTEC. I'm not going to go super far into that, but you know, if you really want to go outrageous, you want to need you're going to need to swap the whole thing. Um, but if you want just full bolt on and a daily, you can't ask for much better. I mean, you're going to be getting good gas mileage. Um, she's averaging 33 right now and that's not hitting it very much, you know, but this thing averages, I averaged today 26, which was a lot, but usually I'm getting 23, 24 and this thing can just easily get 26, 28 easy, even hitting it a little bit. So that is a, that is a problem. So if you're looking to modify this past full bolt on, you might want to just swap or look into this guy here. Here's another cat. <laughs> And one thing is you have a cutie over here, the brand of cutie, which is just fantastic. h gen doesn't have it, so if that's what you want, sorry, buddy. Um, the dream build, honestly, is a K24 bottom end and a K20 top end. That is the dream. So I'm going to put you in a little secret here, guys, if you watch this video. That is the dream for this car, as is everyone. I want to go full bolt on and then do some out looks and lower and put some wheels on. But after that, I want to go K24A2 or A. Um, bottom end with the k20 top end and you get the you get both worlds i mean you really do you get true vtech and you get a higher flowing head with a, a really good bottom end and i'm not going to go super hot for, like crazy into that but if you were just stuck on this car and the looks and just the way it is you're either full bolt on or you're going to swap it so i hope you guys know that 
let's get into the drive. Let me stop talking, or I'm going to keep talking. And uh, let's do that race. Uh, thank you guys for watching. All right, guys, we're in the car. Uh, again, this isn't going to be a very long section. I just wanted, I do want to just show how the cars are different from each other. And mind you, this is a, this is a completely stock other than Honda Flash Pro with a stock reflash. Um, otherwise, completely stock. Everything else is completely stock. And then on the ninth gen, Scarlet, she has a old Flash Pro tune. Um, a short ram intake and a muffler delete if that does anything so it should have a tad bit more power than its stock but it should be pretty close it should be pretty apples to apples but we'll see um, again this is uh this isn't gonna be very long i just want to show you how the car perform in just below six thousand it's kind of like a dog you know what i mean but it's still so fun it, it wants to be chucked and my v-tech's at five thousand not six. There's VTEC. You can hear a hit. Scarlet, mind you, remember Scarlet had the muffler delete, so she sounds better. <laughs> she sounds a lot better, <clears throat> and I didn't realize how much, <laughs> how little gas she has. And that's going to be an extremely important thing in the race. I have a full tank. This one has an eighth. <laughs> just a lot is actually there like below four below 5,000 actually works
mature power band, you know? It actually has torque down low and it stays within the power. It doesn't all come in after 6,000 RPM. The 8th gen feels more charismatic at those later RPMs than this one does, but this one feels more full through the whole power band, unlike the 8th gen does.